LG has launched its first ever OLED monitor, likely with true RGB subpixel structure, at CES 2021. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, Vincent Hill from HDTV Test here. LG Electronics is well known for its OLED TVs, but even after a slew of CES announcements, there appears to be no OLED TVs smaller than 48 inches for the year ahead, although we must say that there might be some possibility of more models being introduced after the second half of the year. But still, it comes as a good surprise that the South Korean brand has today announced a new 32-inch OLED monitor, which is branded by the company as Ultrafine Display OLED Pro. <laughs> Ultrafine. It sounds like a term that I occasionally sprinkle into my pickup lines. But let's get back to the monitor, and the model number is 32EP950. And the screen size is 31.5 inches, and it will have a UHD resolution of 3840 times 2160. Now, if you are thinking about buying this monitor for gaming purposes, unfortunately, I have to leave you disappointed because the refresh rate of this monitor is only 60 hertz. It is not 120 hertz, and it isn't even equipped with HDMI 2.1. So I think you know, gamers, you have to wait a longer while for a small format OLED gaming monitor. But LG is pitching this monitor for the creative professional market. Let's say you are working in the film industry, you are working in an animation studio, you are working on VFX, you can actually use this monitor to do your work because you know it is targeted towards you. So let's talk about you know the underlying technology behind this LG 32EP950 then. So by process of elimination, we can probably rule out that the panel came from LG Display. Now, with LG Display, we currently know that they make some mobile-sized OLED displays, and they supply all the key large-sized OLED panels to all the OLED brands that you know on the market. So let's say they are supplying OLED panels to LG Electronics themselves, to Sony, to Panasonic, to... Philips, you know, and other TV brands who are interested in carrying OLED in their portfolio. So LG Display will be supplying WRGB OLED panels. So the subpixel structure will contain a white subpixel, red subpixel, green subpixel, and also a blue subpixel. But by process elimination, it is unlikely that this 32-inch or 31.5-inch to be exact OLED monitor from LG will be using a panel that is supplied by LG Display. And you know, reading through a lot of announcements and press releases, I managed to find this one from a company called J OLED, and they make high-end monitors, medical monitors. And in this press release, which you can read on the displaydaily.com website, you can see that J OLED has started mass production in 2020 at its Nomi Fab, and I think this press release was issued back in November 2019, and the mass production is scheduled to start in 2020, so the timing is just exactly right. They will provide demo or prototypes for manufacturers throughout the course of 2020, and then LG Electronics maybe have taken up their offer and started selling this 32-inch or 31.5-inch OLED monitor for 2021, and the timing is certainly just right. So I think, you know, the panel will be coming from J OLED. And from that point of view, you will also see within the press release that they will be using RGB subpixel structure rather than WRGB subpixel structure. And I think that this is extremely helpful from a monitor standpoint. Because if you can remember from my review of the LG 48-inch CX or C10 OLED, even though you know I was using it for grading purposes, you know when I was grading my HDR videos to be uploaded onto YouTube, occasionally I found that the text you know could be distorted because of the extra white subpixel and turning clear text on and off in the Windows operating system did not really improve it by that much. And if you can imagine a true RGB subpixel structure 
on the LG 32 EP950 together with a higher pixels per inch or PPI because you know you are squeezing a UHD resolution of 3840 times 10160 into a 31.5 inch screen rather than on the 40 inch CX or C10 OLED you know you have to stretch out the same number of pixels across a much larger screen size with WRGB subpixel structure. So the fidelity and the sharpness of the image won't be as you know high as what you will see on this LG 32 EP950. And I think it is certainly an extremely exciting news from the professional front, you know, in terms of let's say currently if you want a small format monitor that can come close to, say, replicating a Sony BVM X300 or the XX310, which is also around 30 inches, 31 inches in screen size, then, you know, what choices do you have? You know, you probably have the Asus, you know, ProArt UCX monitors, you know, those are using mini LED backlighting. And maybe, you know, you could consider the Apple Pro Display XDR that will also be using mini LED backlighting. And with mini LED backlighting, even though they can put a very high number of local dimming zones, you still cannot avoid blooming or hallowing artifacts. That is just the nature of how local dimming works. And with this OLED monitor, you will be able to get <laughs> probably the best light control possible. You're getting per pixel dimming. So every single pixel can be turned on and off independently of each other, allowing for not only true blacks, but also higher contrast and no halation artifacts at all. So I'm a big fan of using OLED, you know, for any creative work, which is why I'm currently using the LG 48 inch CX as my HDR grading monitor, a cheapskate one, because, you know, I still, you know, am reluctant to spend, you know, 30,000 pounds on the Sony HX310. But let's come back and see, you know, what other specifications we can glean from the specs sheet that has been put out by LG Electronics regarding the 32EP950. So we know that it has a 10-bit display and covers 99% of the DCI-P3 and also Adobe RGB color space. And we know that in terms of connections, there will be one USB-C port that is capable of 90 watt charging. There will be one HDMI input. I don't think this will be HDMI 2.1 because the panel itself is not even 120 hertz. And then there will be three USB ports and also two display ports. And I think, you know, from the display HDR certification point of view, this display is rated at display HDR 400 with true blacks. What this means is that, you know, it can hit at least 400 nits in terms of the peak brightness and the black level will be rated at 0 0.0005 candelas per square meter. But, you know, I will be interested to see whether in actual fact it can actually hit higher than 400 nits or indeed 400 nits is the limit of its peak brightness. And from the calibration point of view, it can be calibrated using LG's own in-house LG Calibration Studio software, and you can calibrate the 1D LUT and also the 3D LUT. I am not sure whether there are any plans to try and get some of the more popular calibration softwares on board, such as Kalman. But, you know, it is certainly an interesting development that I want to see going forward. But I think, you know, there are still a couple of questions on my mind about, you know, the viability of this monitor to be used as, say, a grading monitor for a creative professional. And one of it is, you know, the potential for screen burn or burn-in. I want to know whether there are any compensation protocols or any anti-screen burn measures implemented on this monitor, seeing that, you know, it is not being supplied by LG Display, then, you know, I'm really curious as to what sort of anti-screen burn measure, you know, is available on this set. And also, you know, what is the price point going to be? I think, you know, this is an interesting display. It is certainly a step in the right direction in the monitor market. And Unfortunately, it is not 
suitable for gaming. You know, it is pitched towards the content creation market. But hopefully, you know, with future developments, there will be more similar displays that may be more suitable for gaming. If you'd like to watch more videos about CES 2021 news, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it. And I will see you in the next video.